Hello and welcome to this video with the new DivKid and Vostok Instruments module, Trace. Trace is a 4HP interpolating scanner that takes any four inputs and allows you to scan through them manually or via CV control. Here's what's to come in the video. This video is sponsored by me. Go buy a trace, buy a trace or two. Trace is a four channel interpolating scanner made in collaboration with myself and Vostok Instruments. If you're new to the idea of an interpolating scanner, think of it as a morphing crossfader with multiple inputs. It takes four inputs and morphs between them, whether they are audio or CV. And you can think of it as three crossfaders in series. Input one will scan, morph or fade through to input two, then two to three and three to four. Interpolating scanners were introduced by Jürgen Habel in 1994 and then further improved by Donald Tillman in 1999. Vostok Instruments have built on these circuits further with custom VCA curves giving a fine-tuned slope and fade for a smooth transition between audio or CV. You can scan between your oscillator waveforms giving smooth wavetable-like drones, or you could scan at audio rates for complex oscillator-style tones, you can switch between modulation sources, morph between modulation types, there's a whole range of potential here for Trace with lots of other modules. And we'll explore some of that here in this video and in future videos too. Going through the features here, it's really nice and simple. We have our four inputs that we scan through that come to a single output. And then we have the scan CV input that can take any modulation sources or even things right up through audio rates. The scan CV input has a scan CV attenuator and we have a switch here to invert that CV behavior as well. We've made the scan control work across a five volt range so you can scan through your inputs with a wider range of modulation sources, dialing in that behavior with the fader and the scan CV controls. The patches in this video are on screen now for you to skip around and they only really scratch the surface of the potential of Trace. So leave a comment with any requests and suggestions for things you'd like to see in future videos. We've got lots of future videos to come on different patch techniques with Trace and your suggestions can help influence what's in those videos. I should add that there's written documentation for the four patches in this video in the Trace manual. That's on the Vostok Instruments website and linked down below. So for those that prefer text and manuals, you can check that out and try the patches for yourself. Without further ado, let's dive in. In this first example, we're going to take basic analog oscillator waveforms and scan through them with different modulation sources to create a more advanced morphing cross-fading waveform. We'll start with more basic morphing waveforms before moving on to create complex oscillator style tones from just a single oscillator and trace. The left hand data here is showing my inputs with matching cable colors and scope trace colors. Input one is a triangle wave. Two is a pulse with an LFO modulating its pulse width. Input three is a saw wave. And input four is a minus one octave square wave sub. So standard waveforms that you'd find on many oscillators. The right hand data with the blue trace and purple cables shows traces output. And the yellow trace here and orange cables is any modulation that we'll use throughout this patch. Now, if we start to modulate this, I have a slow triangle LFO that's just going up and down, as that's bipolar, as LFOs typically are. We'll start with the scan in the mid position, and then turn up our scan CV so this LFO move up and down through these waveforms. And we're really only a reverb away from having a big drone. It's interesting how this wave shifts in and out of that sub and pulls back to that cleaner triangle wave. Now if we filter Trace's output, add an envelope to modulate the filter cutoff, and then add a P 
pitch sequence to the oscillator. We have an interesting sound that shifts from the cleaner triangle, the richer waves and the sub, and it creates something really engaging. Now let's remove the sequencing and the effects here. And without a doubt, my favourite thing to do with this kind of patching is to take the scan CV, so the modulation, and the inputs all from the same oscillator. Instead of using an LFO to scan, let's take a sine wave, so at the same frequency as the inputs, we'll scan through them with this yellow trace here, the sine. For simplicity, I'll remove the LFO that's modulating the pulse width for a steady pulse on input 2. And we're already kind of drawing new waveforms, if you like, and creating sounds that we might not have heard before. Inverting that scan CV will have quite a different behaviour. this sort of growly pulse like sound let's add the PWM back into input 2 and we can filter this again modulate the filter add a touch of verb So simply pairing a VCO with Trace, you can create complex oscillator style tones without the need for one. You can think of Trace as a kind of universal oscillator expander that will expand any oscillator that has multiple outputs. We're getting new rich waveforms without the need for wave shaping, there's no folding and no FM, and it's musically very stable as it's all coming from one oscillator. And again, these are waveforms you've probably already got lots of in your system. So here we're using Trace to scan through different modulation sources that go to modulate the cutoff of a filter. We're doing that under some scan CV, so it's modulated modulation. We're removing that. The scope setup here matches the previous patch where the left-hand data is our inputs and the trace colors match the cable colors. Input one is an envelope. Input two is a stepped random signal. I always like stepped random just bubbling away. Input three is a triangle LFO. And input four is a higher pitched audio rate source. But much like working with audio, I really like these kind of in-between mixed kind of blended states. And I've chosen the inputs and the order that they go into those inputs to kind of create these nice modulation pairings that I like. In this case, an envelope and a stepped random voltage. And this is one of my favourite pairings, an envelope with some stepped random. Certain envelopes poke out to higher frequencies on that filter, others are pulled down. This is really live, bubbly, musical modulation. We move through the stepped random to introducing this sense of ebb and flow with the filter. Even though we still have some steppy behaviour from input 2 there. And then input 3, with the audio rate modulation, creates this kind of vocal sways. Yo, yo, glottal, formanty, fun audio rate filter stuff. Now, we'll use this pink trace here, or red trace and pink cables, to the scan CV and sequence through the modulation. You'll see that on the output here, which is the blue trace on the right-hand data. Let's push up to hit that audio rate signal. 
Opening the cut off some more. We're sequencing through four different modulation sources to modulate my filter. You could use the same modulation. This could be four different envelopes with four different shapes playing four different rhythms. It could be four of the same LFO. But I like that mixed envelope random LFO audio and playing around scanning between them. So here I'm using Trace as a kind of sound selector or even a pattern maker. It's shifting between four different hi-hat sounds using a CV sequence to scan between them. These sounds are not coming from Trace, the kick, snare and kind of reverbed out bass line. Just muting those, here's what's coming out of Trace. And removing the modulation, this is four different hi-hat sounds. And with stepped modulation, you can kind of get a switch-like behavior where you're switching between different sounds. But if we modulate, and the modulator is the green trace here, we say a ramp LFO. You fade through those sounds. You could invert this, going to the top and then bringing down the modulation. And going back to a step sequence here, The different voltages are leading to different positions on Trace's scanning, which kind of sound like a switch, but we are getting in between mixed blends of those inputs as well. If we invert, we'll get a different behavior. And I'm pushing the fader up or down when I invert here because the modulation is just unipolar. This goes from 0 to 5 volts. So the CV attenuator up full, 0 to 5 volts will move the fader fully. So if we invert it, we need to start at the top and let 5 volts bring it down all the way. Every hi-hat is triggered from the same clock here. If I change the clocking pattern, so even just triggering everything from the same source, this is almost like a CV over sample selection. And he's creating little grooves and patterns in his hi-hats to work well against the other beats. So here we're using Trace to scan through different modulation sources and then using a quantizer to make melodies from them. As with the rest of the patches here, the left-hand data is the inputs, the traces match the cable colors and the inputs to Trace. The output here is the blue trace, the green one is the quantized version of this signal, and the yellow one is my rhythm for my melody, which also tells the quantizer when to quantize a new value. Let's change that to just play on a 16th note clock. There's also this background pulse, just highlighting the quarter note feel here. Let's remove the modulation from Trace and go through the inputs. Have a basic square wave here. And these are all unipolar sources, all clock synced from a PAM's new workout. Go into the second input. We have a triangle shape. a sine wave shape on input 3 which is moving twice as fast as that triangle and input 4 is this kind of logarithmic decay envelope I'm going to change the rhythm here to a Euclidean rhythm it's just a bit more interesting than just clocking this melody all the time And again, like with audio or modulation, it's these kind of in-between states that are interesting here. If we have the triangle, we push some of input one. We can introduce these steps that still rise and fall with that triangle shape. 
then we have a random voltage that plays every two bars, so this will change every eight beats. Turning that up. And it's interesting to think of melodies in terms of their shape and their phrase, rather than for specific notes. I've chosen really obvious examples here and quite a quirky, major sounding thing. But you can scan through all sorts of audio modulation and then use a quantizer to pull melodies out of it. Thanks for checking out Trace. I hope you're already thinking about how many ways you can incorporate this into your patches and making more out of the things that you already own and have in your systems. I'm still dreaming up patch ideas and bringing those together for future videos, so do leave a comment if you'd like to request specific module pairings for Trace or specific use cases, and we'll try and get those in future videos. Hit like and subscribe, that all helps out the channel. Support me on patreon.com forward slash divkid, and I'll see you next time. Bye.